Hi there, we'll get started in just a couple seconds. As you're getting settled into your comfy WebEx viewing chair, please note that you have a chat feature available to you. It's in the upper right corner of your WebEx. Feel free to send me any snarky comments or send me any questions and I will be sure to answer them at the end of our webcast today. Let's, let, let's get going and not let anything stop us. Your lines are muted, so I'm the only one that's talking today. You can send your questions via that chat through WebEx in the top right, or send us an email if you can't find that. Get started at CirrusMD. Today's agenda will give a little background about CirrusMD and some highlights from the two conferences, ATA and Health, and we'll see what's on your mind. Let's get going. First, a mini plug for my company, CirrusMD. We're the nation's leading enterprise chat-based virtual care platform that empowers efficient and more meaningful connections between patients, their healthcare providers, and the rest of their organizations, no matter what the patient concern is. CirrusMD delivers the most cost-effective platform that resolves encounters at the highest rates, which leads to a delightful patient experience. Up first is a recap of the ATA conference. ATA is the world's largest telehealth innovation and networking event. This year, attendees took a look at telehealth issues, technologies, concerns, and surprising innovations in this emerging medical market. Here's some of the top takeaways that we learned at the ATA, and we have some videos to back this all up. Payers and health systems are seeking the next generation in telemedicine. They're trying to delight consumers, provide instant access, resolve encounters to save money, provide asynchronous care, and meet consumers where they are. I have a little video clip here of Wesley Chapman. He is a doctor from Kaiser Permanente. He's also in charge of innovation and business development. And in this clip, he's talking about how they've used chatbots and traditional e-visits, and then they turn themselves around to learn about enterprise chat solutions. They actually use CirrusMD, but it's really interesting to see what he has to say about chat. So let's play this little clip and check it out. We had a um, uh, we had work that we did for a few years around e-visits, and I thought e-visits were the coolest thing in the world because they solved my problem from a lean consultant perspective and from a care delivery perspective. It really crushed lead times down significantly. And the software was great. It was engaging and interactive, and it was responsive. And if you have a cough, it'll ask you cough questions. And if, it, if you don't, it doesn't bother you with them. And I thought, patients are going to love this. And we really struggled to get them to use it. And I thought, what is it that they know that I don't seem to know? Or, or maybe they just don't know what I know about it, and they'll all come flocking, and it took a long time, and they, they just haven't, and they, they still haven't. Enter chat, uh, in which the experiment there, and this is the surprise and delight piece, is that we are going, we, what we do with chat is we remove every administrative or triage barrier between a patient, what we call a member, a member, and the solution that they're seeking, the human solution they're seeking. Now, some members refuse to believe that, that that's actually a doctor on the other end, and they say, you're a robot. And then they'll enter into discussion about who's a robot. Um, but, um, but we remove every barrier. And it is so surprising to people to be given this sort of fresh text field with no instruction and no limitation that allows them to enter a question. And some people enter with, hello? Uh, and some people write, you know, I fell shoveling snow two weeks ago and I can't move my left arm. And they get an immediate response. And so this is then, I think, the last really core element to us is they get an immediate response and that response is very clearly human. That response is very clearly empathetic. And so we, we have designed a process and we train to it, we recruit for it, and we manage to it that the, the human interaction is everything that a patient is looking for in this super thin medium of chat where you don't have many opportunities, many lines of text to form a relationship, but that we are going to do that. We're going to form a relationship, and we're going to have people at the end of this saying, this was so great and really surprising to them. 
we've needed to do zero marketing, uh, and we're uh, we are well well along our our journey to being where we want to be in terms of volumes. Um, it's just a very different sort of thing, and so for us, that experiment is really hitting on all cylinders and on across all those dimensions. That is so inspiring. So, Dr. Wellesley Chapman, Medical Director, Innovation for Kaiser Permanent Day, shared those lessons with us at the ATA. Really neat to see him talk about it, where he's kind of putting it in air quotes about chatbots and traditional e-visits versus their new enterprise chat platform that's getting them more results. So as um, as we were working through the ATA, here's some of the um, quotes that were said on the stages. And also, at the same time, there was another general session happening with Dr. Matt Muller, who was talking about how they use chat for post-ED visits, keeping patients safe at home, making sure they're getting taken care of through telehealth um, chat, and how they're avoiding um, ER uh, readmittance rates. So very, very inspiring next generation of telemedicine um, seems to be enterprise chat, according to all these sessions at the ATA. To kind of top that off, our very own um, Dr. Blake McKinney, who's a co-founder of CirrusMD, also had a poster session at the conference who kind of tied everything together from the consumer side, sharing that um, patients can access a doctor within 83 seconds and 72% of all encounters that someone would come visit a doctor via chat, um, they would have their encounter resolved 72% of the time. So that's very exciting news. Um, we learned this at the ATA as well. My favorite panel happened to be with Dr. Patrick Cornier, the Chief Medical Officer of Kaiser, and Jen Carancho Simpson, who is the Chief Operating Officer of Texas Health Aetna. They were talking about what it means for payers as well as health systems. Both of these people have an, a unique um, place in the market where they either have an IDN like Dr. Patrick Cornier or a JV, like um, Mrs. Simpson here, who has a JV with a health system. So they're talking about their experience with experiences with chat. Dr. Cornier starts out by talking about these um, about our chat platform, actually, and he's saying how it's working not only to solve medical encounters, but it works throughout their enterprise to. Um, connect patients with other team members besides just strictly medical visits. So it's pretty interesting. So let's play that clip right now. The continuity mm -hmm. that's important. In our environment, we have to own the whole experience. And that means uh, patients coming to us, members coming to us who have a clinical and financial question, coverage question. We need to be able to help them to navigate effectively through those different um, sources of insight and solutions to their problems in ways that are continually more and more gratifying. Um, the, the Cirrus chat with a doc is a good example because it's chat with a doc and it's chat with uh, financial folks and member services. And being able to help patients, members navigate across those different kinds of venues right. to get their answers uh, to the questions that they have, I think is really important. So it's really great to see um, people using chat um, to expand beyond medical care. Um, so that was that was the chief medical officer of Kaiser talking about expanding their care solutions. And next, this is uh, the last um, kind of clip of the day that I have for ATA. And this is um, Mrs. Simpson from Texas Health Aetna talking about how they must meet members where, they're, where they are. They have a, a population in the Dallas-Fort Worth area that's really hard to get to. Some of them don't even um, have access to a doctor very easily, so they have provided um, chat as a service so they can meet members where they are. So here's a little bit about Had that. any relationship with a primary care provider, and so continually promoting um, additional access points and meeting our consumers' needs to where they're at and giving them alternatives such as the ones that we have with um, Sears MD um, allows us to really give a, a level of consumer-centric um, options to our members. 
So we have, um, these are just obviously highlight clips from this conference. We have all of the, the sessions in their entirety on our YouTube channel, and that's just SirisMD on YouTube. So you can see more about what they're saying. But it was really neat to see this at the ATA. Um, chat was dominant. We were on the main stage and on breakout sessions. Um, so that, that was our big takeaway from this conference. Now on to the health conference. No, it's not H-L-T-H. -H. It's pronounced health. The first ever health conference was a huge stage for healthcare organizations and tech companies to introduce their plans to disrupt health, drive up patient engagement, and lower costs. It capped off last week in Vegas. This premier conference ended with a very positive impression in a new style of a healthcare conference. So I encourage you guys to get some budget to attend this next year. Next year it's going to be in Vegas at the MGM Grand. And um, here's some of the takeaways we found. Startups as well as the big players had an equal voice at this conference. Um, they had main stage and breakaway and panel discussions that were all very, very well attended and transforming the healthcare business model as well as exploring new models of care were really super pertinent in this conference. And a lot of these almost all tied back to next generation telemedicine. So if it was a retailer talking about how they were exploring new models of care, they really translated that back to telemedicine. If it was a health system or a payer, they really were working on um, owning that patient relationship, which was really great. Their marketing budget must have been huge because it was a gorgeous conference with um, no details spared. It was really, really great. Our very own Dr. Blake McKinney, the co-founder of CirrusMD, was also there. He's pictured right here. If you can see my mouse, he was, this is the moderator and Blake was right here. He really um, brought the house down with some great comments like, I've been trying to give away healthcare now for years, and he had some super um, insights and entertaining quips that that are really great. We have his full session and some highlights from it on our YouTube channel, CirrusMD. So I encourage you to check it out. And he really he really held the crowd, and it was really great. Also, you know, this conference was very different than any other healthcare conference I've ever attended, with its rapid fire panel discussions where the panelists didn't waste time explaining high-level concepts. That was totally true with the um, chief medical officer of CVS. This is Tryon Brennan. He took the, the stage to discuss the company's upcoming plans to address population health. He targeted three patient groups whose five common chronic diseases have a disproportionate large percentage that equates to the total cost of health care and how he's going to help transition patients back home from the hospital setting. So he really talked about how they're going to do that and how, um, how telemedicine is really going to help them with that. So he's looking forward to partnering with the next generation telemedicine company to, to leverage those efforts. We're going to try to get some of those um, full-length videos of that and put that on our YouTube channel as well. I think it's really great. We're, we're primed um, and pumped to work with companies like these. Um, we learned about a statistic about telehealth adoption, which, you know, you can see where we're at now, 2018. We're just right on the knee to kick it off. So I think the um, adoption, um, if we can do it right, we, we hopefully can, can make that a little bit stronger. But... That is a graph that shows the rapid adoption of virtual care and telemedicine in the near future. The major second theme of the conference was focused on entirely new business models. And I think this is really cool to, to think about. We heard from exciting companies like Change Healthcare, who's teaming up with Adobe and Microsoft to orchestrate better patient engagement. And also from a company, Walmart, who you wouldn't expect, but Walmart said, and I quote this, Walmart isn't going to stand for this. When they're describing the poor quality of care their associates have to endure 
um, and they were t sick and tired of it. And Walmart's heading towards a push for evidence-based care that um, ends physician entitlements. So this was a pretty um, rock and roll session from Walmart that I did not expect. So it was really great. Some some panels and some main stage were kind of the same all that we saw at HIMSS, inclu including like blockchain and artificial intelligence and ma machine learning and interoperability, which was which was great. And they kind of like carried on that that topic. But um, some of the exciting um, other things that we saw were this panel that is pictured at the bottom here, the unicorn panel. They delivered a lively discussion about their businesses and how they brought them from nothing to something. And the moderator of this panel asked them all, you know, what was the next unicorn and what was going to be the next exciting thing in healthcare? And um, Ann Wojcicki, who is the CEO and co-founder of 23andMe, was also asked this question. And she said that her unicorn will be a telemedicine company that can be more prevalent that can reach through more of an organization and can use a chat or AI component. So when she said that, it was like something that didn't exist and it gave me chills because I, I felt like reaching out to her right there and letting her know about our company. But it's really cool to see um, these innovators talking about things and how, how technology can help augment um, what they're doing. So um, another you know, play to kind of transcend these new models of care happened with Lauren Steingold, and she's the head of Uber Health Strategy. So she literally took this concept to the next level where she's talking about how, you know, healthcare and patient or transportation really has a huge effect. And she, I'm just going to pull out my paper, she gave me a stat that said, she can she did a model that says they can help eliminate 150 billion with a b 150 billion dollars in yearly costs to the healthcare industry by helping Americans who miss appointments due to transportation issues that is absolutely incredible and Steingold described her vision of expanding that model to encompass telemedicine, telemedicine patients who need a ride to the pharmacy or even after a, sur a patient has surgery, they might need a ride home. So cool. So it's just neat to see, um, see companies that aren't in our space thinking about this kind of stuff. So it's, it made me super jazzed. Everyone there was very excited about this. All in all, the conference left me, my colleagues here at CirrusMD, and all of the attendees more informed and energized. We definitely had a huge bond. And at the end of the um, conference, we danced, danced, danced all night to celebrate. So I'm not going to blast your ears, but I'm going to play this while I read the questions that have come in. So I'm just going to take a couple questions. Anything else, you can email me directly or you can use your chat feature. If you leave me your email address, I can get back to you later. All right, that's enough for a work day. Uh, first question that came in, do you see your company partnering with any of the big names you mentioned, like Amazon, Walmart, or CVS? Well, Absolutely. Yes, definitely. All of these companies are like CirrusMD in a way. We're trying to provide quality care while meeting the customer at home. So we're working to deliver the new kind of healthcare experience. So what I saw at the health conference and at the ATA conference generally leads me to believe that we will be partnering with these companies in the near future. So thank you so much for that question. The second question that came in, Nice recap, thank you. Um, what other conferences will you be at this year? I like your recaps and I'm living vicariously. <laughs> yes, I feel very lucky to be on the road and to, to learn such things, but um, we will be at uh, the AHIP and Shishmed conference for sure. We're not going to be exhibiting there, but we will have a presence there. And we'll even have some representation at the upcoming VA summit 
it's the VA Healthcare Summit in Washington, D.C. So we are um, entering the uh, veterans market because we know that veterans need access to care. So we'll definitely be there. So anyway, so let me know if you have any more questions. You can email me or if you leave your email or yeah, your email address in the chat bar, I'll be able to, to answer you directly. It was so great to have you with us today and thank you for attending today's webcast. We look forward to chatting with you again very soon and if you have any questions, just please feel free to reach out. Thanks again. Have a great day.